we have seen a sequence like 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on. In this sequence, 3 is the first term. To define the nth term in a simpler way, we just call the first term as a. How do we define the second term then? The common difference as we can see is 2. If we call the common difference as d, the second term can be written as a plus d. What can the third term be written as? That's easy. We write it as a plus 2d. First term plus twice the common difference. So based on this logic, how can we write the nth term? We can write it as a plus n minus 1 times d. Why n minus 1? Observe the pattern. Third term 2d. Second term 1d. So this is the formula we had seen earlier. First term plus n minus 1 times d. It's just that we have written the first term as a. Now that we have seen individual terms in a sequence, we can get to the sum of their terms. How do we find the sum of all the terms in a sequence? Think of it in terms of average. The average of n terms will be the sum of terms over n. So the sum of terms will be n times the average. Understanding the average is the best part of it. All sequences are evenly spaced numbers. For evenly spaced numbers, the average is the sum of first term and the last term over 2. That's it. We get the sum of terms if we know the number of terms, the first term and the last term. The sum of terms in a sequence is called series. We will understand more about it in our future sessions. Let's take the 2 outside and write n by 2. The first term is a and this is the last term. So first term plus the last term is equal to 2a plus n minus 1 times d. This is the formula to find the sum of terms in a sequence. But wait, this is only an arithmetic sequence. Yes, this is an arithmetic sequence as the difference between two consecutive terms is constant. But wait, what are the other types of sequences then? To look at more types, we go through the next sequence. 3, 9, 27, 81 and so on. Pause the video and think about whether this is a sequence or not. Okay, some of you would have assumed that as the difference between two consecutive terms is not constant, this is probably not a sequence. Don't forget the definition of a sequence. It is simply a set of numbers which have some pattern. And the pattern can be anything. Did you spot a pattern here? Look at the ratio of two consecutive terms. The ratio 9 over 3 is equal to 3. And the ratio of 27 to 9 is also 3. Just like the common difference in arithmetic, we have a common ratio here. We can call it R. Each term is multiplied by 3 to get the next term. This is called a geometric sequence or progression. Let's assume the first term of this sequence as a. What will be the second term then? It will be a times the common ratio r. And the third term? It will be a times r squared. And what will be the nth term of a geometric progression? Look at the pattern. Second term r raised to 1. Third term r raised to 2. So the nth term will be a times r raised to n minus 1. And what will be the sum of the terms in a geometric sequence? This is just a formula you need to know. a times 1 minus r raised to n over 1 minus r. The proof of this is pretty easy and it is good to know. But you don't really need to know it for your exams. So the four things you should know for the exams? nth term and sum of terms for an arithmetic sequence and the nth term and sum of terms for a geometric sequence.